Uh, I just wanted to share some ideas if I can, uh, hopefully something provocative, I'm sure I'll get everyone talking. But, um, you know, I, I failed a lot in my life. You know, I'm a, actually I failed 39 times in business before I started Finder. And I actually started by going to my next door neighbor when I was 19 years old and he asked me to build his website. And back then, you know, I was playing computer games and I used to build websites for fun and he was going to pay me $1,500 and I was like, wow, that's incredible. You're gonna pay me to do something that was fun for me. You know, and back then, you know, doing things that are fun and getting paid for them, I thought that's a good idea, I'll keep doing that. And so I kept on building websites, and one of the websites uh, for businesses we built was called Freestyle Media, and we sold that, actually, uh, we did that with Frank Restuccia, he's another old Sydney, uh, back in 98. Frank actually played the first tennis, he played above me. We're not gonna talk about that today. <laughs> But he scraped me into the team, and that's 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 how that's how I roll. Anyway, Frank's been my business partner for 19 years, so that's a long time. It's longer than I was married, actually. <laughs> um, so, you know, I think I was always very inquisitive about technology, and I loved learning and and and, 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 and figuring out how things worked. And actually, back in year four, this is now going back to the Sentai's preparatory. We used to play a little game, I don't know if anyone remembers this, it was a game called Racer, and it was on the micro B, it was in, on the color screens, and I used to actually tear the game apart and rebuild it. Um, and actually we'd make four cars and five cars, and we all used to play against each other. It was a competitive game. And um, this game was a game which actually taught me about how to use computers. And there wasn't a course on computers when I was at grammar but um, it was always an area you could go into, but it actually gave me the gateway, the, the opportunity to go and build, um, you know, and, and actually play around with computers, which was a new thing back then. And um, one of the key things that I actually did at university was I was not actually attending many of the lectures, unfortunately, because I just wasn't that interested. Um, I'd studied computer science and actuarial studies, but actually, not partially, and I went to the subjects I wanted to go to that, that taught me how to help build websites for other people. And, you know, what's really instructive and I think interesting about that is that I took the skills from year four and I studied computer science, and then I actually learned how to build websites. And I actually coded personally the, the first Finder website. You know, I'm not an engineer, and I'm not like a computer scientist, but I'm just dangerous and curious enough to have a go, and that's how fun started. So my first idea I wanted to share with you is that some ideas aren't meant to fit. Um, so I look back, you know, on my schooling, and I was thinking about it, and um, it was a good time. Um, there was a part I didn't enjoy, unfortunately, and that was that I thought differently. And I wasn't like ultra academic. There's some incredible academics of grammar, and I, I just herald that. I just wasn't, no matter how hard I sat at my desk, I just couldn't get the same performance. I don't know. It wasn't, I couldn't find a place in grammar where I'd be number one, which is kind of unusual. But it's not, it's not a fault of the school at all. I just want to flag that. Nothing to do with the school. I actually think it served me because I was going to seek for a place to be number one. And that's what I think is great about grammar. So my actual favorite times um, during exams weren't actually getting the results because they were pretty rough. Um, middle of the road, solidly middle of the road, but I was pleased about that. Um, it was actually, after you got your exam paper back, my favorite time, was going up to the teacher during class and saying, sir, clearly this question, you've said this is the answer, and I partially answered that. Now let's talk about how you're going to give me partial marks about this. <laughs> and I would argue aggressively and creatively to get extra marks after the exam. That was the entire game. <laughs> so, you know, I think what's important here and what's instructive um, is, you know, some sort of signal or some sort of concept or some sort of idea um, is reached when you, you know, and I've created a lot of things in my time, is when you, it's not a design process. In those moments when I was trying to get that exam extra credit, I was reaching into the darkness and trying to find something. 
trying to, trying, to, trying to give it some way that he was going to give me some more marks, he or she, whatever it was going to be. And that process is the process I have used to create businesses and create ideas for my entire life. And it was a very competitive environment, right? And I loved that, but I needed that extra partial credit badly. So I had motivation. It's not so much that I didn't fit in at school, it's just that I didn't have an area where I could be excellent, where I could show extreme excellence. Yes, I played, you know, GPS chess, and I was very strategic and those kind of things, but I didn't have a place. That's okay, that's nothing to do with, nothing, no fault, no, 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 no harm in the school at all. And one of the things I think is important, but is I've always seen rules as guidelines. So, you know, and I'll just quote, this is from my book, um, if I can. I said, rules are manufactured, imaginary ideas created by someone in a specific moment in time. They don't necessarily define the boundaries of what is possible and what is not. If you can interpret them and innovate around them and work out how to get to the goal that normally lies beyond the rules, that's where growth and innovation happen. And for me, I unfortunately, that those partial marks were my best performance. And in some small way, I've always tried to reach past them. And, and, and in that place where it is unclear, where there is no clear way forward, where there is a blank page or a dark room, that is where I shone. So I think what's important, the other thing about grammar that it taught me was, is to create environments to nurture spaces where it's okay to make mistakes. I obviously made a lot of mistakes, and I did participate in quite a few detentions as well because I was always trying to... I saw the rules as grey. I'm not saying I was like the worst student, in fact I performed you know, relatively okay, but I always was trying to push the limit. And that was because... And I'll tell you another story about where, where that comes from. But when I walked into New York City, and we started Finder in the US, 2015 in August, the first thing I did, we sat around an Airbnb table. We actually had a box, that was all we had. We sat around a table, we cobbled some chairs. I said, the first thing we're gonna do here, everyone, what I want you to do before we begin this business in America, is it's okay, I want you to know, I want you to make mistakes. I want you to try things. Don't bunt, swing, go for the fence. Because if we're gonna have one chance here, we better make it a win. And all, always in that business in the US, they always take chances, and that's why I find out from Australia, obviously, when we're going to America, we've had a chance and we've scraped our way up from the bottom of the barrel and got up. Because we take chances and we make mistakes and we learn from them, we create environments where it's okay for that to happen. So some things just aren't meant to fit. Second point I want to talk about is what's called a chaos monkey. So there's a company, everyone knows, called Netflix. Now inside Netflix, they have an important, um, uh, there was a student, an actual um, a person who joined a young coder. He wrote a piece of program, and he wrote actually a program, unfortunately, that took down the whole of Netflix. Now everyone was pretty annoyed, but then actually they realized this is a vulnerability to the system. This is actually weakness that he's identified. And what they did from that is they actually wrote a program called the Chaos Monkey that would literally go around the code of Netflix and pull cables out of the, out of the wall and shut things down and to see if Netflix would keep operating. So, my mum was a, uh, a leading ophthalmologist. She did 35,000 cataracts, about 25,000 laser eye surgeries. She was the first female ophthalmologist who laser eye surgery in Australia, and she had a big battle in her industry to, um, you know, to get to the place that she wanted to go. And you know, from my mom, I learned not necessarily about what the problems you experience, but actually how you deal with it. You know, I didn't always listen to my mom. In fact, I had quite a different view to my mom. You know, she was a very she, she, extremely uh, you know, ultra intelligent parents, right? You know, they told the state and like, you know, when you're a kid and you're trying to argue with your parents and they're ultra intelligent, it's just, you keep losing, right? <laughs> it's so annoying. So as a, as a kid, I thought, okay, what am I gonna do? 
Well, what I would do is I thought, well, where are they weak? Where am I going to win? So what I would do is I would move the argument to a new ground, a different place, an alternative solution, a place of creativity, a place where logic and rationale doesn't necessarily always win. Neither of us had any advantage. Instead, we were arguing about some foreign topic or some particular way. And in that space, I had a fair fight. I didn't always win. There were still very creative people as well. But I needed to move the battle to a territory where I could win. Now, in business, what I have noticed, or what I have uh, found, and this is just for, for me, just sharing my, my personal story, is that it is just so lucky that by chance, doing things a different way, as opposed to the guaranteed path, provides actually, when you succeed, great reward. It is just so lucky that we live, that I live in this version of the multiverse and metaverse that we all exist in, in this 3D environment that we think we are existing in, that it is chance and attempts at different thinking that wins. And this, if, if I do win, it's great. Just flagging, I've had a lot of loss as well. So for my parents, I'm very grateful that they were ultra intelligent and then obviously in my schooling, they were, you know, everyone here, ultra intelligent and ultra competitive. I had to move the game to a different space to win. And just to give you the level of, you know, I guess that rebelliousness or that chaos monkey that I potentially am, if I had a company and let's say, I was not the owner, or I, I, I just moved into a company, and I saw myself working in the company, I would probably be the first person I would go and fire. Because you don't want, you know, when, when, when Phil Jackson was asked of the, of the Chicago Bulls, you know, how do you deal with, um, you know, uh, Dennis Rodman on the team, right? Dennis Rodman and, 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 and Scotty Pippen and Michael Jordan, incredible players, right? One huge season, you got, then you have Dennis Rodman. What, what's this guy doing on the team? Great defensive player, incredible when you just snap onto the field. And Phil Jackson replied, you can only have one Dennis Rodman on the team. And so I'm that I'm Dennis Rodman, you can only have one. <laughs> I just want to quote, um, so my point here, if I was to, to share, in the Legislature Act of 1854, which set up the Sydney Grammar School. Um, and I'll just quote, whereas it is deemed expedient for the better advancement of religion and morality and the promotion of useful knowledge to establish in Sydney a public school for conferring on all classes the denominations of Her Majesty's subjects resident in the col colonies of New South Wales without any distinction whatsoever the advantages of a regular and liberal course of education. That's a great line. <laughs> That's a great line. I wish I had that. And, it's, and, and we should celebrate that, because that, that was a forward-thinking thing, and it also brought us all here today, which I think is great. And I just want to call out, if I can, in one line of that phrase, promotion of useful knowledge. In the future, I, I just want to comment, if I can, what might be useful knowledge. I think that with the advent of AI, and robots taking over many processes and ideas and even thinking to some extent, I think creativity will be one of the last things that humans will have an advantage. And so I think skills around that might be something, and I don't know how, um, well, I propose an idea here. Um, one is maybe inside grammar, there is a Chaos Monkey Award, and it is the prize for the creative rule breaker. <laughs> That's my proposal. I am taking these submissions and um, obviously uh, debates on that as well. But I'm sure there is a chaos monkey among us here that isn't just me. I'm second and I appreciate that, sir. I'm going to move on to point three. Point three is called the opportunity inside change. What does change mean? Change is guaranteed. For me, if the internet didn't come along, Finder wouldn't exist today. 
what actually happened? So, I've always seen change as two things. One, you have this problem that happens, you've got to deal with the impact, you know, it's good, it's bad, whatever happens, right? And the second thing that normally happens, which is my favorite part, is you capture the opportunity that now comes from the change. That is key. That is the moment to move forward for. Many companies don't deal with that. Many companies decided not to deal with the internet. When I used to drive around Sydney in the early 2000s, selling websites, people used to say, thank you very much, Mr. Chubester, but I'd rather my yellow pages at. I said, that's fine, that's fine. I'll try the next door. The opportunity in the change of the internet was to provide a better service. Opportunities come in many forms, but most of them are packaged with a key element, timing. Timing is what makes a great business. Many ideas have been thought of, they didn't quite work out, early internet ideas came and went, but now those ideas are relaunching and they're working. Timing, I think, is what makes a great entrepreneur, a great investor, probably a great sportsman as well. When COVID first started, Finders saw a massive drop in credit card business, right? Huge drop. Credit went down. Less people, everyone was at home, no one needed to travel, no one needed credit. During that time, what's really strange, and someone commented to me on this the other day, is they were very confused as to why I was so calm, why I felt confident, why I was almost happy. And in that moment, what I reflected on is that I saw a moment of change and therefore a moment of opportunity. A wormhole of opportunity had opened up, and I know I'm really good at going through wormholes, and doing strange things and finding that opportunity. And during that time, we adapted and we launched a face mask business. The number one page on Finder was how to buy toilet paper. We helped uh, people uh, who are new armchair investors, new, the new Warren Buffetts, come in and obviously purchase their shares and their cryptocurrencies. All ideas that, that for us were thought about before, but we now had to make a change and make that a priority. We had to adapt. And that allowed us to continue on, provided a better service for our customers. And I was thinking, Sydney Grammar has a great legacy. And I thought, again, what is legacy? I think legacy is when old, old men or old women plant trees for shade they will never experience. And I was reading the Grammar Strategic Plan. I think that was some good work. <laughs> and I want to quote, it says, our constant aim is to help boys to have a true sense of self-worth and to celebrate their own individuality whilst respecting the differences of others. And I respect that about Grammar. I think it's a great, tolerant place. Grammar is a school which not only respects but enthusiastically embraces diversity amongst our community. Again, a statement which I agree with. The promotion of useful knowledge is built on the widest range of ideas, I believe. And from my experience, your agenda doesn't seem to be a determinant for the best ideas coming forward. Instead, I've discovered that camaraderie comes in all forms in our community, and the makeup of my teams, and Finder, and all the business of him, have enabled the best ideas to come forward. The very nature of the competitive landscape requires the leveraging of the best ideas to stretch oneself to the highest order of excellence. Excellence is another value, I think, that, that grammar has. Without the diversity of ideas and thoughts, it can lead to a narrow set of thoughts, and the weakness is that the team doesn't consider a wide enough set of perspectives, a shortcoming normally seen only in the long term. And it's hard to see short-term thinking, and it can stifle long-term excellence, but it usually lives in the choices of best ideas, and changing those choices when there is a greater opportunity for the long-term. Someone once asked me when I was in the New York office, and we were starting out, we had 12 people in the office, and someone came to me, and the Americans are very forward, I found that out the hard way. And someone came to me and said, Fred, 
when are we going to start hiring some guys around here? There's only girls. And I stopped and I went, you're right, I've never even considered that. I've never ever uh, hired someone on the basis of their gender or race or anything like that. Doesn't, doesn't, I didn't even see it, I didn't even notice it. Instead I hired the best person for the job. I believe in a meritocracy. The best brain surgeon should be paid more than the worst. That's what I prefer my brain surgeon to be. I'm not sure everyone else is. I'm in the business of meritocracies. There's no evidence to suggest that boys only school will ever have a greater impact on a boy's education than a co-ed educational environment. The evidence is inconclusive. But what I do know is that better quality ideas come from a more diverse group of people. The world is, a change, is changing, and Sydney Grammar has an opportunity to adapt and grow by being proactive and taking an opportunity. I'm urging for a brave change to co-education at Grammar, to make way for a better set of ideas and an even broader set of skills for each child at Grammar. Maybe my girls might not grow up with the same, the same opportunities that were given to me by the school, but maybe there will be girls that attend this school that do. That may be emotional. <laughs> in the Sydney Grammar 2021 annual report, it states that the school takes great pride in the culture and society, social diversity of its pupils. Let's create a wider diversity of thought with co-education and see the change makers of tomorrow come from Sydney Grammar School. Thank you very much.